Hello, everybody. So, Cindy Danilla here with another Age of Empires 2 interview. This time around, I am interviewing another Gamer Legion team member. It's, of course, Tato. Everybody should be familiar with him. He is a fantastic player hailing from Spain. And I wanted to know, he is the only player who has gone through to qualifiers every single time in Red Bull, although he hasn't been able to go past that. And I wanted to explore that a little bit more. Also get his predictions, which I am going to mark with an X or with a check if he got it right. Because, of course, qualifier 2 just ended. We know all the players that are going to be going into the minimum. But anyway, that's for later. For now... Let's start the interview. And I want to start out by giving the audience a little bit of context because you are one of the invited players. You obviously didn't have to play in any of the qualifiers. And you also have a bit of an interesting record so far with the series, which is that you've always reached the quarterfinals. And I believe from the from Liquipedia, at least that I checked, you've all you are the only player to have done that. You are the only player who has come in every instance in the quarterfinals. Of course, it's sad that you don't you didn't get much further than that, but it's also pretty interesting to me that you've managed to get to the quarterfinals every single time. Of course, you're a top player, so it might not be that surprising, right? But the question that I want to ask you to start out is, do you think that record of always being able to be there invited, always being there to get out of the first round, do you think that is a good indication of the skill level that you personally feel you are at at this moment in, in you know, Empire Wars and the Red Bull Well format? Or do you think that so far in the past two tournaments, you haven't been able to properly show that you are a contender for something a little bit uh, further in the brackets? Because, for instance, when I talked to Nelly last time, he told me that you were one of the players that people were not... Um, thinking about so much and that could go really for really far in the bracket mm, definitely like I, I can go farther i feel like i didn't have the best way to practice this this empire more like i used to practice without viper the game religion guys but we are having the same mindset that we we are practicing for our rm tournament so we kind of fail a little bit that on that in the last red bull tournament but this time we are uh, having a different focus. So probably, or we are thinking that it's going to be better for this. So yeah, I'm high, I'm uh, confident on, on my skill, and I'm definitely sure that I can go further. Right, and I talked with uh, Viper a couple of days ago, and I asked him about the practice that you guys have been doing, and he told me that you ha that at least Viper hadn't been um, train that much with everybody, but that he has been spending a little bit of time as of late with you, practicing with you for the event. How does practice look like, um, you know, a week before the main event? We know we're going to have the group stages. You're going to have a, a good number of matches to kind of showcase all of that practice, how it pays off. So what is the practice a week before the sort of major group uh, stage? Well, so far, like, we really didn't focus too much on the main event because we have some teammates that they have to qualify first. So uh, mainly we have been helping them to practice. As I said, like another focus. And um, yeah, like we didn't focus on the main event yet. We 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 have been helping them more than preparing ourselves. It will start to, like tomorrow or awesome. And what does that practice with? your teammates that have yet to qualify look like. I know that, you know, Doubt thankfully qualified last week. Uh, I believe Jordan has an opportunity this week if uh, my memory serves right. Yes, he still has an opportunity this week. Um, Nelly, I think, also has an opportunity and they actually don't have to fight each other. So that's going to be a benefit for GL if both qualify. So what has been the practice that Jordan and Nelly has been going through with you, with Viper, maybe with Dowd, with Slam? Well, uh, it's a lot of games because until uh, last rounds is always free pick. So we have been practicing a lot of maps, playing a lot of maps, with different civilizations, always uh, trying not to mirror. So we say the civilization that we, we are going to use. So we don't get mirror matches and trying to find the best strategy, for us, trying to find if there is any inbound civilization as well. So we can, have, we can have like an abuse, how to counter that civilization, making drafts, practicing draft is important. 
I, I wanted to know if you felt that on some level there was um, something of a blind spot, maybe in previous Red Bull Wallows, right? Um, did you ever notice a bit of a blind spot in your practice or, or in the training in general, either you know, for you personally or for the team as a whole, that after those events were over, you know, Red Bull Two, you thought, hey, we probably need to do this thing a little bit more to be better prepared. Mm, yeah, but I don't think that comes from the draft. It comes more from the the way that we look and we practice red for the Red Bull tournament. Because if you do have uh, that mindset and you are having those strategies in mind, your draft will go according to that. So now that we, we will we are changing that way of uh, looking at the buy wars, you will focus on different civil hessians as well, and your draft will probably. Be. So I don't think we had a bad draft, but it's just that we we had the draft that we wanted to have. What are some? Who are some of the up and coming players that you might be seeing right now, whether in Red Bull or maybe in some other tournament, that? You know, if you try to remember a couple of months back, maybe a little bit more, we're not that big of a name when it came time to, you know, looking at the bracket and thinking what is going to be a good matchup. Who do you think right now is putting out some performances that might get them into, you know, the, the next year over of recognition when it comes to being a good competitive AOE player? Mm, well, probably Daniel. I think he, he did an amazing job qualifying on the first event. I don't remember exactly the result, but he beat he did beat Jordan and then he beat Chris. And he was like four zero for one, so that's a amazing score. Definitely, he he deserved that spot. And now I kind of want to get uh, some quick predictions on because we're recording this right in the middle of uh, well, not right in the middle, in the tail end of the second qualifier first day. So we know the top. Uh, the round of 16. A lot of those games are actually going to happen tomorrow. But I, I want to know who you think from each group, essentially, is going to be getting the qualifier. I'm going to be a little bit biased towards the GL guys, but you know, I, I kind of want to walk through your thought process on why somebody would qualify. So yeah, on the to... on the upper side, I think it's the easiest one to pick. You have NBL, Cassava, Barrels, and Sitao. So... I think I know who you're going to go for, but I want to hear from you. Mm, well, Emil is the favorite, right? But I think they can surprise him. So, I mean, I would not be totally surprised if he doesn't make The next one is back to Jordan. So that is going to be playing tomorrow. And then you have Slam Valles. And the winner of those two is going to go for, is going to need to play against each other for the qualification. I would imagine that there is a possibility for a Jordan slam. Um, so I want to know what uh, what do you think is going to be coming up on that one? I think Jordan will beat Batty and then Slam versus Jordan will be, hmm, that will be an even match. Well, Jordan versus Batty will be, uh, not sure, not sure. Uh, it's a tricky one. I think it can go either way. All right, yeah. And then we have for, for the third group, we have Vivi Say My Name. Nilly and Lix. So that is a, a very packed uh, group. But I want to know, do you think that Nilly is going to qualify and then he's going to need to give up his seat as a caster? <laughs> well, I think Vivi is favorite there. But Nilly has been practicing a lot. So uh, I have. I think he will beat Lix and then he will, he will make Vivi run, a run for his money. Cool. And then we have for the final one, Viles versus CL. Bad Boy versus Vodka, and then obviously the winner of that is going to try to go for the for the quali there. Uh, well, I think Belize is the is the favorite. I think it's, it's quite like it's quite clear that he's, but he should be careful with Tiel. I think he has a, a interesting style. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, that is all of the questions that that I had for you, Tato. I don't know if you want to say something to the people in the audience that. Uh, you know, they're probably going to be looking forward to watching you play in the group stages and potentially in the playoffs, ideally in the playoffs. So I want to know how, what do you want to tell people? What What do you want perhaps your other competitors to know about you? Should they be fearing you? Should they be, do you think they're maybe underestimating uh, your capabilities? Tell me. No, I don't think anyone underestimates the player. So I will just uh, feel that they have to enjoy the tournament, cheer for whoever they want and obviously i will try my best and 
at least I will, if I do my best and I, I get wherever I get, I will be happy. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for giving me your time for this interview. And of course, best of luck uh, next week when it's group stages. Thank you so much for having me.